This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Hey everybody, Chris Fafalius here. As many of you may know, I've played in the band Punchline for most of my life. Well, I'm here to tell you that we just released a new song. It's called Can I Get a Break? And I think the title of the song, which is also the main hook of the song, is pretty relatable to how we're all feeling lately. Here's a little preview for you. How many times am I gonna have to start again? How many times am I gonna have to refresh? Cause I put my shoes on every day and I walk out that door. I'm getting tired waiting patiently for progress. Can I Get a Break by my band Punchline is now streaming at all the places where you can listen to music. So if you like the way it sounds, go check it out. Dylan, hey, because we're in the upside down. Oh, I get it. I get it. Let me just forewarn anyone listening now that if you haven't watched all of Stranger Things, we're going to spoil the shit out of it. If, hold on a second. if you haven't watched any of Stranger Things and the internet hasn't already done what we're about to do. Yeah, we're going like. to spoil it. Um, So this is, as Matt pointed out off the air, this is one of Dylan's classic uh let me find something to do with Christmas about this thing I want to talk about. Yep. Um, so we're going to talk about Stranger Things. And my excuse is that the first season takes place um, at the end of November. Um, and Will communicates with his mother through the Christmas lights. And then through that, I discovered that there was a, uh, a short done, a Charlie Brown Christmas short um, or a Stranger Things short done in the style of Charlie Brown Christmas. Um, that's pretty great. And as I also went further down the rabbit hole Googling Stranger Things Christmas, there's also a Netflix short clip um, about two minutes long of all the kid actors being super obnoxious. And it kind of made me never want to watch Stranger Things again. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going to talk the, about Stranger not Things. Not the weakest argument you've ever had for watching something Christmas. No, 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 no. Joke. So I was... Guys, stra- this last season of Stranger Things, while good, was really fucking long. And it's been a while since I have seen season one, but I remember there being Christmas stuff in it. So, so when I brought this to the table, I could have swore there was more. But what happened was that final episode of season one takes place on Christmas Day. Gotcha. So that's so- that's my argument. So here is my thing with this new season of Stranger Things, and yeah. it's still a weak argument, but you put off it until all of the season was out there. And I yeah. actually feel like breaking this up the way they did was better. made it feel slightly less long <laughs> because yeah, it was man. like, you know, you had like five to six like hour and some change long episodes. So you could knock that out in a day over like a seven or eight hour period. <clears throat> and then two episodes that were like almost five hours yeah. in length that you could knock out on another afternoon. Like, so I was able to do them both in one day essentially, but um, 
but yeah, I think that watching it all in one sitting or or over a weekend even just would have felt like complete punishment because <laughs> dude, it really was. Well, so let's <laughs> let's break it down a little bit with season four. We're not going to get into all the Stranger Things. Like if you're listening to this episode, you know Stranger Things. We don't have yeah. to go beat by beat on this whole thing. And but we'll talk about the Christmas stuff. We, we've got to we talk about we'll, the Christmas. We'll get, stuff. we'll get to the Christmas stuff. It's in our namesake. Yeah. But we, you know, the season three. So well, let's start here. Okay. Your feelings on season three, because I was not aware that it was as divisive as it apparently is. I didn't either. I liked season three. I thought season three was great. I thought it was too. So I like, there were a lot of people who were writing like season four finally fixed all the issues I had with season three. And I was like, what issues that it was fun. I think I've, I've, yeah. And that's my thing. Um, I've got a few opinions on it. Number one. Um, I love anything set during the summer. Like, especially yeah. when it comes out on summer vacation. I am an avid. I love putting Shark Week on the background. I don't give a fuck about sharks, but it's Dude. like it's summer. Like, I need to put this. On. I, I have been watching shark specials on Disney Plus all fucking week because they dropped like 20 of them like okay. yesterday. I, I love summer camp movies. I love like I every summer I'll watch Sandlot. I love that theming. Yeah, like I love that idea. So when I found out that season three was going to be that, I was way into it. Um, also, I am one of the people that before I watched season four, um, and I still partially feel this way. I thought season three was a great ending. Yeah, like I, th- yeah, I season thought- three would have been fine. I thought that that was it. I thought it was so a three I. season show for the longest yeah. time. So did um, I. So I got some. So season three leads to my biggest beef of season four though. Uh, and I've talked to you about this off the air, but I'll say it on yeah. the air is that we gave Harper such a perfect heroic Hopper. death. Hopper, Hopper, Hopper. <laughs> <clears throat> take two. Yeah. We gave Hopper such a beautifully heroic death in Agreed. season three. Yep. And then they put this stupid stinger in there to remind us that he's still alive. And mm. that's fine. It's not fine, but it was like what bummed me out was that everything tied to him and rescuing him from Russia dragged yeah. season four down. Mm-hmm. It wasn't interesting. It wasn't exciting. So it's like you not only did you eliminate what was a very beautiful, heroic send off to like a main character, yeah. like you you chickened out. Mm hmm. I have no faith that they're ever going to kill any of these main kids, nope. which is fine. It's 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 an homage to like Emberlin films that. Spielberg used to use in like all those movies, Goonies, all like the kids are never truly in danger. It's about the danger happening around them. That's fine. I'm, I don't want to see any of the kids die. I really don't. I feel like the only one that you could argue could die is like 11 has to sacrifice herself to like seal up I everything, buy that. you know, like, yeah. but like, I don't want to see like, I'm hearing people say like, oh, they got to kill Lucas or they got to kill Steve or they got to like, they don't, they don't like, None of these characters should actually die. They have gone through way too much shit. They did it the right way. Like, I know that people are upset about Eddie because he was a great character, but like, that's what you introduce a character like Eddie for is you create a character that we love, but that is expendable because we cannot lose our main kids. And that was the Um, thing. The entire season was building up to Eddie dying. Like every single episode. Because my argument, I think I texted you about this where I was like, what happens if Eddie lives, like he either gets killed by the jocks or arrested. Yeah. Like and there's, there's for everything. Like, yeah, there's no way that he was going to just get out scot-free no. with the way that things are going. So unfortunately he always had to die. That that's yeah. the only way, like they were written into a corner with that. I will um, say of all of the characters introduced each season that have died, that the internet's gotten behind Barb, Bob, Ed, Eddie's been the best one, like 100%. Eddie's- Eddie's been the best one, but I, I still, as much as I think that season two is the weakest season of the show, yeah. Bob's death hit. Oh, like yeah. Bob's death oh, yeah. was very effective because Definitely. I mean, a you got Sean Astin, so it's tying in the Great. Goonies yeah. whole thing. But mm-hmm. like, but his character was so likable. Mm-hmm. Like when he's just thrown into the chaos that is actually the Stranger Things world, and he's yeah. like building these puzzles with them and like helping solve the mystery. Like you're just like, oh, this guy rules. Yeah. Like, and he was so he, good for Joyce. 
It <laughs> was so much better than what Hopper will be for Joyce. Yeah, let's really. be honest. I mean, it's it is a very this is going to be a very toxic relationship. It's it's a to- it's a relationship built on shared trauma, which is not always the best route it's for a relationship. Never the best route <laughs> um, for a relationship. But yeah, so, but yeah, the Hopper stuff just did not work for me. It bothered me. I will me argue that Murray is one of the best characters. Murray's great, show. but I've got a little bit of beef with Murray right now since someone really? pointed out that I sound like. Murray and I don't like that (laughs) I'm not gonna comment Um, (laughs) I will say I agree with you and I said that multiple times while watching the show um, that I felt like the things that were happening in Russia just pulled me out like pulled my interest away every Um, fucking time now that doesn't mean that I think the characters in Russia sucked. I didn't. I did like the guy that eventually teamed up with Hopper. Um, I liked their chemistry, but the whole thing itself, I just wanted to see them get back to America and help these fucking kids. Yeah, <laughs> and it never happened. It never happened um, until maybe five minutes into the ending. Watching the beginning. I I texted my friend Jason and I was like, I really want to watch a season of this show where nothing bad happens to these fucking kids. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I just want to see, I I don't want to see, I don't mean like, oh, I just, I just feel so bad. I want nothing bad to happen. I'm generally interested in their day to day antics. It reminds me of everything sucks. Remember yeah. that show? That Everything we, Sucks was so good so and good. so underrated. And I just want to watch that. I want to watch these kids just go through like everyday problems. I have my own issues with season four. I do wish that we could have a little bit more Eddie. I'm not joining this group of people online that are like, bring Eddie back. Don't bring Eddie back. No. But I'm also of the thing is, you know what? Fucking kill Max. I hate that all of a sudden we're like, look here. Eleven can bring people back from the dead now. Oh, I've got this power now. And I know yeah. you were explaining to me the references, the X-Men stuff, the Dark Well, it, I mean, but I agree with you. Like, it does feel like it's just, I don't think that they execute it her gaining extra powers well enough. No. Like this whole season there. So the big thing and, and all of the credit has to go to uh, my friend Caitlin for her article in Geekscape for this, but she sat down, she looked into every single pop culture reference from the first seven episodes to yeah. try to build predictions for the last two episodes, which is actually a really cool project. But the big one was that will says that he's excited to show Mike that he got X-Men issue 134. And she's like, what is X-Men 134? X-Men 134 is the final issue of the Dark Phoenix saga. And in that particular issue, a group of supervillains named the Hellfire Club bring a dream, like a dream creature named the Mastermind into existence. And that's what pushes Jean Grey to fully evolve into the Dark Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right. I mean, you've literally got the Hellfire Club in there. You've got the Dream Demon, and Eleven is Jean Grey already. So, like, it, it's an obvious homage at that point. Like, of course, that's the comic book that you'd have referenced. But it's like not everyone's doing that fucking research, Russos, no. for a show that is so good at using D and D terminology and scenes of people playing D and D to introduce famous D and D villains. Did you just say the the Russos? Like the Avengers guys? Oh my God. I did brothers. Duffers. (laughs) The Duffers. Dude, give the Russos season five, honestly. Yeah, no, but like the Duffers. Yes. The Duffers rolling in. Like they do such a great job of like introducing Demogorgons and like all of these D and D characters through the plot that like you can't, you couldn't figure out a single way to introduce the dark Phoenix saga naturally into the conversation beyond like a very subtle yeah. reference to it in, in a scene. Like it's also like, it's not same, a show about subtleties. No, <laughs> like, the same people that are like, yeah, we inserted all these like cool references. Forgot about Will's birthday that they set like an actual yeah. date for like, <laughs> it's your shit, bro. Yeah. Like, so I mean that's that's my thing, but that stuff like that's, that's stuff all where minuscule. it's like that that's minuscule stuff. The biggest issues, like I said, the Russia stuff, yeah. just 
It, and I never, I kept thinking like, maybe this will pay off. Maybe something will happen in the final episode where I'm like, you know what? That was well worth the ride. And it never really happened. Like, yeah. I don't feel any closer to feeling like Hooper. Oh my God. Hopper. Jesus. I know. <laughs> I'm not any closer to believe. Stroke. I think so. <laughs> I'm not any closer to feeling like Hopper shouldn't have stayed dead. Yeah, and like Joyce and Murray could have been used for literally anything else in this story to a better effect. Like I know that it, you needed to get them out of the picture to make this fully the kids with no adult help yeah. story. I get that. I totally get that. But. I don't know. I just feel like there could have been literally any other way to get there yeah. than than the route that they took. That being said, fucking Robin Hawkins, <laughs> so good, steals the like. Oh, people are giving a lot great. of credit. Yeah, people are throwing a lot of credit to Eddie. They're throwing some credit to Argyle. Like these are like these new characters that they love. But holy shit, like she absolutely dominated this season. Every yeah. scene that she was in, she was funny. She was charming. Like, I know some people complain, like, how is she still making jokes? Like when things are getting really serious, but it's like, dude, she is the, the most anxious, neurotic person. That is what anxious, neurotic oh, people yeah, do dude. in high pressure situations. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. I don't but yeah, know, it was I, good. I mean, it was the most, uh, you and I are two horror loving boys, and this was the most horror stranger things definitely. season they've ever done. Definitely. Um, that first Honestly, kill with Chrissy. I was oh, like, holy so shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. So Teddy watched it. As soon as it came out, she's like, are you ready to watch this? I'm like, no. She's like, I'm going to fucking watch this. And she watched it like from beginning to end. And finally, like r the week before the second half came out, I sat down and watched it. That was my take is I, as soon as that happened, I texted her. I was like, is this is this how the whole season is? Because I'm about <laughs> this. Like yeah. Chrissy, like getting her eyeballs basically sucked back into her head. Absolutely adored it. I will say I was worried after that first episode because I was like, is this going to be that fucking plot line where everyone's going to think Eddie did it and and we're going to be dealing with him going to jail? And she, she's like, no, that doesn't happen. I'm like, you're lying to me. And, and she kind of was. It was yeah. pretty much like that, um, which is one of my least favorite storylines where we know that this guy's innocent and the whole movie, the whole show is dealing with that. Um, it's stressful for sure. <laughs> it's it, Yeah, it, it gives me anxiety. Um I will say my biggest issues with this season deal with things not happening this season. It's dealing with fandom again. Well, and look, fandom sucks. We already dude, know it's that. So bad, man. Like this whole like gatekeeping metal. You can't gatekeep Metallica. They're one of the biggest bands in the fucking world. Did you see the shit that I shared today? No, what'd you share? It was a tweet that someone posted that said, you can't sass kids about discovering Kate Bush and Metallica through Stranger Things. I know fully well that my entire music taste came from Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. You're not fucking wrong, dude. <laughs> You're not fucking wrong. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. What's up, everybody? This is Brian here to tell you about our podcast, Binge Town TV. Our hosts include seven best friends with a love for all things television. We cover a range of genres with a focus on fantasy and sci-fi, but also dip our feet into drama, horror, comedy, and pretty much anything we think is good television. We use the traditional deep dive formula for new live shows that are released week to week, but our calling card is our Rooks and Vets and Pitchtown TV series. Rooks and Vets pairs two of our hosts that have seen a show with two of our hosts that have not seen a show. Pitchtown TV is when we have a special guest pitch us a show by having us watch the pilot and trying to convince us to watch the rest. If you're craving more content on some of your favorite TV shows, then you should listen to Bingetown TV. Find us on our website at bingetowntv.com, the Apple Podcast app, Spotify, or wherever else you may find your podcast. I love when these younger kids have some type of weird shared interest with the world that I grew up in. Yeah. Like, 
it's exciting. It's exciting to be like, oh, you like this thing. Let me show you more of this. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you really like Master of the Puppets? Like, check out that full album. It's yeah. fucking great. Like, yeah. <laughs> and when you're done that, like, here's a really good Megadeth album and here's like a really good Slayer record and here's yeah. like Among the Living from Anthrax. Like, yeah. Like you can open up those conversations. That is sad, lonely dudes in their basement that are like, yeah. oh, I don't fucking want kids. And I don't want kids either, but I don't hate kids. <laughs> like, but it's like it's the other side, too, where it's like, oh, the, you need to stop gatekeeping. Metal- you can't gatekeep what is probably the biggest metal band of all in time. The world. They're never yeah, going to be of top. all time. They're never going to be top. There will never just, be a band that's, that's bigger than Metallica. Like, just the thing. Now, and that is, let me clarify. Yeah. Dylan and I can both say, we're not saying Metallica is the best metal. No, 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 no. Like, I, I, that's what I was just about to say. I said, kids, strictly Metallica record died sales. in the 80s. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> like strictly based on record sales, I believe they are still to this day the only band that has played all seven continents. Like, yep. they are mass. They are they are the Beatles of metal. Like, yep. you know what I mean? Like they are the band. Yep. So it'd be like, Oh, these, I, but I feel like it's not even, it's not even gatekeeping. It's like, so, so prime example, literally this happened yeah. today. So like I said, I work with youth. I work with a bunch of, there's a bunch of kids I work with who are high schoolers that just graduated. Yeah. And one of them I know is like really driven by like social justice. They're really into music and hip hop. And I was like, have yeah. you ever heard of Rage Against Rage the Machine? Yeah. And they're like, no. And I'm like, you need to check out this album. Like, yeah, you are going to be blown away that like 10 years before you were even born, the stuff that you care about, there was at least one band out there writing songs about it. You know what I mean? Versus being like, Ugh, you don't know this band that broke up before you were born. Like, Fucking leave the kids because that's the thing. It's like, I can't believe these kids are just now discovering Metallica. It's like, well, they're fucking 15 <laughs> and they haven't put out a good album since the mid 90s. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, and even arguable. those are arguable. Like, <laughs> yeah. I am I am a strong defender of load and reload, but there are plenty of people who are like, pretty much when the Black album came out, that was the end of the band. Like, yeah, I don't even, I'm not even, I, I, I understand that that album has hits, but I'm still like, mm. I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a thrash Metallica guy, and that's about it. See, I will uh, argue that Load and Reload are actually better albums than the Black Album. Uh, I think they have better jams because they've I mean, got stuff like you, M- Memory Remains. Man, that song fucking ruled. That's fine. Until my, it my, sleeps. But, but Until I mean, it's not. It's <laughs> I'm not saying these are bad albums. It's but just it's my, want, yeah. my Metallica. And I'm not even going to say my. I wasn't even born when these records came yeah. out. But the last Metallica album I thoroughly enjoy from front to back is Injustice for All. Yeah. So, which is I fair. mean, I, I like that style. It's the same thing with like, I continue to love the Aquabats, but modern day Aquabats is not the same as the Fury no. of the Aquabats. No. You know what I mean, like, like one is like a. One and a half ska records, and I only say one and a half because Fury is just re-recordings of of pretty Return. much that first record. Oh yeah, yeah, the first record, Return. They're and a new wave band essentially. Yeah, and then but Floating they Eye, they switched in my heart. Yeah, exactly. Like, so I mean, I I do love that Aquabats always gets roped into the ska scene, and they have released one ska record. Well, it's the same <laughs> thing with No Doubt, really. Like oh, yeah, No Doubt, one hundred percent. Like another one that's like one and a half ska albums, yeah. but like. Even when they were putting out like rock steady and everyone was bitching about, you know, oh, this is like disco dance. But then no doubt reunites and people are like, fucking skank time. And it's like, you think yeah. they're going to be putting out more ska music? Like, dude, <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> fucking skank time. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it, man. Um, so here's my thing going back to Stranger Things is the way that it ended. I'm hearing rumors that season five is going to pick up after a time jump. So I've heard that. I believe that the the vibe is essentially these kids are getting too fucking old. They're for getting too city. old. Yeah, like literally. <laughs> well, because no one predicted that there was going to be like a two and a half year hold on them being able yeah. to film these last two seasons. So to which when that was announced, I was like, all right, cut it. Hopper yeah. never survives. Show's over. Like- yeah. Like, I mean, I I am. Look, I am excited whenever there's a show that actually has a definitive ending point. That alone yeah. makes me excited. So if this has always been the plan, like, let's get there. Yeah. Like, let's just get there. But, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I like the... Here's the thing. The fandom is, like you said, the fandom is making me question if I like this season. Because yeah. I thought I did. <laughs> 
I did. I, I like this season. I'm not going to let anybody change my mind. But I like I and I but it's still really enjoy Stranger Things. But I still go season one, season three, season four. You know, like this didn't yeah. take over those seasons one and season three that I think are masterpieces. Yeah, but it's definitely better than season two that I think is a very jumbled mess. That Which is like so disappointing because it was the Halloween season. Like, I know <laughs> it was Stranger Things season two. The biggest problem with Stranger Things season two, like talk about. Here's the one thing I will say. It's a season four is a very long season, but I feel like it utilizes excluding Russia most of its time properly. Yeah. Season two feels like that shit could have been four episodes that just got in and out of the point and like wrapped it up. There's like so much drawn out nonsense throughout most of season two that it drives me insane and like there's that whole episode that we have never gotten any additional information about where eleven's just hanging out with the weird punk kids in like chicago or some shit to teddy i was like do you remember when there were like different superheroes and she like went and started hanging out with them whatever happened to them (laughs) i have a theory and i hope that one day i'll get the duffers or the russos who knows i'll ask both (laughs) to tell me i think that I think that that was an attempt at a backdoor pilot. I think that that was an attempt at establishing like a spinoff series that they could do. I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked by that. Because it had nothing to do with anything. I keep waiting every season. I keep waiting for these other superheroes to like come and save the day. And they haven't fucking made themselves known. And I think that if they showed up in season five, most people would be like, who the fuck are these kids? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I kind of expected them to, to be in the, the facility in season four. And then they weren't something, nothing like they're, It's like a forgotten thing that they did. They really did. That episode really did try to Marvel shit where it was like, look, they've got superpowers too. And we're like, no, I don't fucking care. Like (laughs) they're blowing off the backs of doors and trucks and shit. Yeah. Like, I don't give a shit about this. Go back to Hawkins. (laughs) Yeah. It just didn't make it. It. It didn't work for me. It did. But that's fine. No, but this season was really good. I I just wish that it was a tad bit shorter that they kept Hopper dead. That's it. The rest of it, I loved hanging out with these kids this season. I yeah, really did. I, I did know too. that I think he's a regular listener of the show, so I'll call him out. Chris Fafalius of the band Punchline yeah. really fucking hates Argyle, and I just don't get how you could fully hate that guy. <laughs> he's not great. I'm not saying he's the best character on the show, yeah. but like that dude has appeared. I've seen him in three different things, and American I have loved Vandal. him in all three of those things. American, American Vandal, Vandal Book Smart. Like he's he plays the one character. But he plays it well, and that's yeah. all that matters. Yeah, I don't think he's acting. No, <laughs> I, think I think that's that just little... him. Yeah, and I've, seen, I've seen, I've watched interviews with him where he's just that's him. Like, yeah. and, and I and I I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, I will say, going down the list of kids, Gaten Dustin is phenomenal. I love that kid. Always that kid. That kid rules. Well, that's sorry. You were talking about how you just want to see these kids hang out. Yeah. I would pay any amount of money for a spinoff series that's just like Dustin and Steve have a summer job. You know yep. what I mean? Like yep. just following those two guys exactly. being best friends. Dude, I'd I watch wanna, every I, episode. I just want to watch uh, Steve and Robin work at the fucking video store. Like that's like, what I mean. Like, like, just, like yeah, just put a camera in there. Dustin comes in and visits every once in a while. Just like, like a wacky thirty-minute sitcom. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I won't doubt it. Like, give me Holliston and Hawkins. <laughs> yeah, just Clerks, the TV series. Yeah, exactly. So uh, there's a lot more to comment on. Uh, Dustin, I-, I thoroughly enjoy that kid. Lucas, he was really good at the role he was playing this season. Um, as much as he got on my nerves, I understood why. I don't think any kid has gone from like, I really like this kid to, I really can't stand this kid more than Finn Wolfhard. <laughs> you do hate Finn, man. Dude. I, I thought he was awful in, in the ghostbusters movie. I thought he was not great in this, in, uh, in season four. Um, I, I feel bad. I don't think he'll ever hear this, but <laughs> I don't hate, I didn't hate him in the ghostbusters movie, but he was in that terrible, um, turning of the screw movie the turning and that was like one of his first like post stranger it is yeah it is fucking bad Bad. it is one of the worst (laughs) movies i've ever watched um i thought the kid that played max is i i like her i really enjoy her a lot um i don't see i think i may have texted you this i don't see 
Eleven doing anything. I I will always see her as Eleven. Where like I can see kid actors like growing up and taking different roles. I will always see this girl as Eleven. But see, I here's the thing that I don't understand, and maybe someone someone out there can let me know. I don't fully understand the overwhelming internet hatred that the world has suddenly for Millie Bobby Brown. Like I've tried to figure it out. Is there, it seems is like there she's just. Like, I don't. I don't do not. I do not want anyone to think that I'm part of that. I just don't yeah. see her as anything other no, than eleven. No, there's like, but there are people that are just like straight up like fuck Millie Bobby Brown. Why? Like, and, I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. Like, is it's it, like sixteen? What she I mean? do? That's what I mean. It's like, is it just because she's like an outspoken child? Like, yeah. <laughs> like I genuinely don't Daughter, know. Shut the fuck up, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, actors yeah. aren't supposed to have opinions. Mm. Like, let me see. Like, I. I like my concern with her is usually tied to like, I don't like how often her and Drake are talking online. That makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Drake makes me feel uncomfortable, which is really unfortunate because I love me some Degrassi. Yeah. I was saying, so maybe this is it. At the age of 14, homophobic quotes falsely attributed to her circulated on social media and meme form, which made her eventually quit Twitter because of the harassment and additional online bullying. She also faced social media users and articles constantly sexualizing her. She became frustrated with the experience and captioned a 2020 Instagram post on her 16th birthday with the comment, there are moments I get frustrated from the inaccuracies, inappropriate comments, sexualization, and unnecessary insults that have ultimately resulted in pain and insecurity for me. After she turned 18, her social media profiles began to be flooded by sexually explicit material from users. Yeah, what a bitch. Like, Jesus like Christ. it's like, oh, God, she's standing up for herself that, yes, Hollywood sexualizes yeah. the shit out of teenagers? Like... Yeah. Man, oh, fuck her. <laughs> like, God, and like going I hate, back I to hate like the world and the internet sometimes yeah. so much. Also, I think you were like there were comments uh when she was 14, maybe falsely, we don't know. She's fucking 14, dude. Like well, some no, the I think they were legitimately falsely done. Like I think okay, it was like okay. some 4chan bullshit where they're like, "Oh, okay. we can like make a fake tweet that says that she said Jesus this shit." Christ. And it's like the, the senator of, didn't though 14 years dude you yeah. know some of the dumb shit we oh said my god we well 14 into my 20s old. before i was like <laughs> oh this ain't cool yeah exactly like, you know, like i was raised on like fuck, trauma man. pictures where i was like no exactly. it's being edgy i'm being yeah. satirical and i'm like yeah no, you're being an asshole you're being exactly. an asshole you're not putting That's other people's exactly feelings in. um steve and nancy what do you think get them so, back together I really like her with Jonathan, and I think it's because I see myself in Jonathan. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. When because they are cute. <laughs> They're cute. I don't know, dude. Rewatching season one. No, no, no I'm saying Steve, Steven, not... Steven, Nancy are cute. Like they're cute oh, together. Yeah. I'm accepting that. But I was say, season one, Jonathan does not hold up, bro. It is real creepy. <laughs> I'm taking pictures. He didn't know there was a monster over there. <laughs> <laughs> And Barb sucks. <laughs> Barb really does suck. I kind of agree with that. <laughs> Nancy's like, Barb's like, where are you going? Nancy's like, I'm a fucking senior, Barb. I'm going to go get fucked by this high school jockey kid. No, well, hold on a second. I'm going to pump the brakes <laughs> on that. And the only reason I'm going to, I'm not going to say that Barb doesn't suck, but I'm going to say that there are two Barbs on this podcast. <laughs> Because I know that there is no way that you weren't the Barb in high school the same way that I was the fucking Barb in high school, where it's like, mean? oh, now my friends are leaving me behind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I keep mind that. But I would have sat where there. Where are you but- going? Please, I'm lonely. <laughs> then you're sitting by yourself. Everyone's out drinking or fucking at the party, and you're sitting by yourself by the pool. I felt so seen in that shot, and I was like, of course she dies, and no one gives a shit. <laughs> but, but, but the difference between the, uh, me and, and, and Barb is I would have also had a beer i'd have been like oh, i'll just sit here fuck it. I, I mean i would have been depressed as shit i would have been <laughs> listening to his favorite christmas song as i was sitting there <laughs> crying but fuck man no it, i i agree with you for the like well the thing because the whole pro barb movement which i also got behind was that no one seemed to give a shit that barb was dead like yeah there was another kid missing, and they were still like, "We gotta find Will." And it's like, "But what about Barb?" Well, nobody like, knew Barb except Nancy. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure there's another group <laughs> looking for Barb. Like Barb's <laughs> fucking D and D crew are out looking for. Her. And Barb know. looked like she played some D and D. That's for sure. <laughs> but all right. But 
Uh, yeah, Nancy kind of sucks. <laughs> Nancy does kind of. Uh, I don't know. I like Nancy. Uh, she was, she, I didn't say Nancy sucked. You're like, I said man, Barb Nancy sucked. sucked. Oh, you said Barb sucks. Yeah, Sorry. I like Nancy. <laughs> Nancy's Nancy was, fine. Nancy's fine. I love the turnaround they did with Steve throughout the series. I love that. Oh, for, um, here's here's the thing that's amazing about Steve is that yeah. I love Steve so fucking much, but if I rewatch season one, I still hate Steve. Really? Like, he does a really good job of being like an unlikable, douchey jock boyfriend yeah. in that season. And then like, like I said, it's that magic, that magic blend of Dustin and Steve. Yeah. Just like <laughs> it really does. It re- d- That kid can turn anything into gold yeah. in my eyes put um, put dustin in fucking everything i really hope that they pull the trigger on the will being gay thing in season five i mean i feel like they already kind of have just say it like just yeah. say it well if they jump <laughs> ahead two years maybe he'll like introduce them to his boyfriend and then I like that so. person dies yeah, there we go. you have to kill every and, new and, and character also maybe it's um not the fact that he's dealing with him, his sexuality that he's like sitting there stressed and depressed about. It's that nobody gives a fuck about him. Well, I don't even think that it's dealing. So, so I can understand that though. I think that what I saw with the will thing wasn't a, like I'm struggling with my sexuality. His haircut. It was struggling with the haircut. No, I think that he was struggling with the exact same thing that happens when like, when you are the third wheel in a situation where it's like, have you ever had a female friend who had been a longtime friend that you fall in love with? And then she starts dating someone who you also care very much about as a friend. Yeah. And then you're just in that. that fucked up situation. Like that's what I think is the real like stress and anxiety because it's like the only way for me to be with the person that I love is for them to have a bad breakup with someone else whom I also love and don't want to see hurt. So then you have to just like Deal subvert all of your yeah. feelings and be like, well, I guess I just have to throw in the towel at this point. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And that's, that's tough at 36. It's fucking impossible at 17. Like that is like so yeah. much pressure. And then yes, on top of it, you're gay in the eighties when it was not a very good time to be gay. Yeah. Like, I, I get it. I, I think that that's cool. I get why they're kind of pussyfooting around it. And again, also, like, we have to remember the time period. Like, yeah. the idea of a kid struggling with his homosexuality in 2022 almost feels laughable because it's like, you could come out to your friends like, I don't know a single teenager that's not, like, the most, like, pro-gay rights kid on the planet. You don't know what your friends in the 80s think about yeah. homosexuality. Like, that is, that could literally be the end of every relationship that you have. So I get it. I I'm for it. Yeah, no, I'm for it. I just also feel like you just don't want the final episode to end and they still never just outwardly. Yeah. Say it. Like I, I just, I, 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 I think mainstream media in general, certain shows are like, look at us. Like this character, they might be, they yeah. might be. Well, but and that's look, the other diversity. Thing. Like, I mean, and that's that's my we'll talk about it on here that. eventually. But like Happiest Season, I remember, was a very controversial movie mm-hmm. because people were like, I'm sick and tired of every queer holiday film having to be. Oh, but what will my family think? Like, yeah. we need to move past those stories. And I agree with that for the most part. Obviously, what I'm saying is Stranger Things. You also have to look at it through the lens of its 1988 yeah, in yeah, the storyline. Yeah. You know, what I mean, like that yeah. that is a. Again, if it was 2022, it would be like, oh, my God, we don't need to go through this story. Just let the character be gay and yeah. let them, like, be out and, and living their life. I get that it's a much bigger struggle if you're t- telling the story in the 80s. Yeah. Um, hey, we want to talk about Christmas stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I think this it, is actually a great segue. Because we're talking about Will. Because we're talking mm. about Will and going into A Stranger Things Christmas which was released after uh, season one. Um, it's on YouTube. If you literally type in a stranger things, Christmas, which is weird. Cause the actual name of the short is Merry Christmas. Will Byers. Yeah. But um, it's, it's created by, I'm going to fuck these names up. Uh, <laughs> it can't be any worse than I fucked up names <laughs> that no normal human beings can say. So Leah Lahav 
and Oren, Oren Mendez nailed it. Um, are the two creators of this, and basically it's Will Byers after he has returned from the Upside Down. It's done in the form of Peanuts, um, Charlie Brown Christmas, and it's Will Byers being very much Charlie Brown, and he's depressed. Um, and it even comes up. Dustin is like. Will Byers, you're the only person I know who could come back from a, like a, a dangerous, um, murderous world and still be depressed about it. Yeah, and like it's it's he coughs up a worm. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's it's very much Charlie Brown. Like Will Byers, very much is Charlie Brown, and I think he has a right to be because nobody gave a shit after he came back. Like, I mean, everybody did kind of just start, like, Will kind of fell on the back burner, not just to the characters in the show, but I, I feel like also to the audience as well. Yeah. Like, people stopped giving a shit about Will. It was like, are Mike and Eleven going to get together? Are Lucas and Max going to get together? Oh, I love Dustin and Steve's relationship. That's cool. And Will has always been this outlier. And that's really highlighted in this 2016 short that came out before seasons two through four. Yeah. Um, no, it's uh, much like Dr. Dre. We forgot about him. Yeah, we forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Were you just building that in your head? Oh, yeah. No, I was sitting there. I was like, we're going to say this. Just wait for the opening. Good, good uh, for you, man. But yeah, no, I, I, I have mixed feelings on the short. Um, it's good. I, I've seen it before. There's nothing where I'm like laugh out loud about it, but it's charming. Yeah. Like yeah. it's a charming little short. Um, I don't know. I feel like the, all of the, a lot of that stuff, it's like, man, this just feels dangerously close to feeling like a mad TV sketch. You yeah. Know what I mean, like that's like the vibe with a lot of that where it's just like, oh, here's a reference. Like here's a reference too. And this is a reference to this other thing. That's the very different of this thing, but we're meshing it together. So like, it's just, it's, I don't know. I would. There was a point where that humor used to kill for me, yeah. and now it's like, it's like, all right. So you took a T public shirt and turned it into a three minute short. Like mm-hmm. that's <laughs> that what's happening here. Like, <laughs> well, what's really good is unlike season four episodes, this is only three minutes long. So. That is that is a, a blessing <laughs> for sure. But yeah, I mean, it's a three minute short. Give it a yeah. watch. It's not the worst thing you're ever going to see no. on the internet. It's certainly not the worst thing we've ever watched for this podcast. It's definitely not the worst thing we've ever watched for this podcast. It's not even the worst thing I watched for Stranger Things Christmas yeah. because later down the line in 2019 <laughs> during season three during season three um i was literally grasping at straws here guys trying to find something Christmassy for us to talk about and um netflix did a really short two minute thing that they called stranger things christmas and it was literally the kids being kids um but it was like the cast members, like they were ta- they were calling each other by their real names and they were just giving gifts to each other. But I don't even I think I think this was just like it's definitely an ad for the season. And it's like, hey, just do Christmas shit. Like I, I, I very much. I think Netflix was like, guys, here's a room full of bows and, and trees and, and gifts and just, you know, just do some Christmas shit. <laughs> and 15 year olds are not very good improv comics. No. And that's very much what it is. It's it's like you're uh it's like the high school show just ended and they're waiting for the director to come up on stage. So you're watching the senior and... variety show, essentially. Exactly. Where it's like this is literally funny to you, to them, your yeah. classmates <laughs> and maybe two or three underclassmen and the parents yeah. in the audience are just awkwardly chuckling like, exactly. oh, yes, I know that teacher you're making fun of. <laughs> So avoid that. Watch the Charlie Brown one once and then like watch Stranger Things. Yeah. There we go. Happy Stranger Things, Dylan. <laughs> Happy Stranger Things, Matt. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, oh, now we won't stop till the big ball drops on New Year's.
You're listening to the Geekscape Network.